Hi everyone, welcome back to Riverdale Public Library. I'm Ms. Helen, and today at the library, we will be making a miniature book that you can wear around your neck as a pendant or put on a keychain, and you can actually write in it. But before we get started, um, I'd like to remind everybody that Riverdale Library's summer reading program will be starting in a few weeks. It will start on June 28th, which is a Monday. And this year's theme is Tales and Tales, spelled differently. Tales and Tales, as in Tales stories and tales. So. When you visit the library, keep an eye out for some animal tales with some more information coming soon. You will be able to register for the program at riverdalelibrary.readsquared.com and we'll be posting that link soon. Um, it'll be available for registration in, in the coming week. And again, it starts June 28th. Okay, so keep an eye on our calendar. Um, we have some activities to go with the summer reading program as well. Okay, so let's start making a miniature book. There are many ways to make them, but about 20 years ago, I was at a craft fair, um, not even in this country, and somebody had made a beautiful miniature book using clay and glaze and paper and she was a serious artist craft artist and it's really a lovely piece so we're going to do our best to make something um very nice like that and we are going to use clay not the kind of fan not the kind of clay that um a ceramicist would use in in a kiln um but this kind of clay polymer clay um, and it's easy to buy. If you registered for the program, we have kits this week and next week, um, which each one has two pieces of it there. Um, and the thing is with polymer is that you just bake it to harden it. Uh, not in a microwave though, use a regular oven. Um, because in a microwave, it, it won't heat it evenly and it will also create problems with fumes. So use a regular oven for this. Um, so you will need polymer clay. Um, you will need a cutting tool. I have one here, um, a knife will do. Um, I also have a couple of tools to make designs in the clay. And I even actually have, I took some, a seashell, a glass seashell and some real seashells that you can press into the clay to um, make a design on your book cover because that's that's what the clay is for. Um, you will also need scissors, glue, and preferably something like to spread the glue with. Um, you will need a, st um, a stapler. Um, and if you wanna measure it, a ruler. And optionally, you could use some clear nail polish or some other kind of var varnish at the end to make your cover shiny. Um, and I also have a bit of twine here. Stretchy, I have stretchy cord here. Um, you can use this to make it into, to hang it around your neck or to add to a keychain. Um, you can also buy keychain attachments like this. So, um, Oh, and the last thing, which everybody should have at home, a regular piece of paper, okay? Just what you would use for printing. Um, it can be colored paper. I know sometimes printer paper comes in blue and green and pink and yellow, um, but don't use construction paper or stiff paper. You want paper that, that folds easily. Um, and for your, when you bake your, clay covers, you'll need some tin foil to put it on. Okay, so let's get started. You're going to take, if you have two pieces, a lot of uh, polymer clay tends to come in chunks like this, about two inches by one inch, maybe a little more. 
Um, you could use a piece like this as one cover and another piece as another cover. Or you could use one piece cut in half and make a slightly smaller book. Um, I'm going to use both pieces today. And when you are shaping and cutting your clay, you want a hard surface, not a paper surface though, because it might stick to the paper. So I'm just seated at a plastic table and um, that's what you wanna be using, um, a, a hard surface like that. Okay, so I'm gonna move the camera a little bit down so you can see more easily what I am doing, okay? We're going to start by just taking your clay and squeezing it for a few minutes, all right? Just keep squeezing it like it's silly putty. It will make it easier to shape and cut later, okay? Just squish it about 20 times. That should be enough for a few minutes. All right, we can start with one piece. Now, making this miniature book has a few main steps. This is the first step, which is making your cover. Okay. And then while the cover is baking later, then you'll move, we'll move on to the second step. But let's start one at a time. Okay, so now we've squished it. Um, move the camera down so you can see everything on the table. And just take your thumb, fingers, press it out, okay? You can take something flat, like um, even the ruler, for example. Try to flatten it, you could use a roller. Um, okay, and you just wanna make one, make a slight oval shape. Try to make it as even as you can in terms of how thick it is. And you wanna make it about two, two and a half inches wide, um, and a couple of inches going this way. Um, I mean, you're going to wind up with a cover that is about this size. Anyway, um, so now I've just flattened it out. You see, because it's not on paper, I can pull it up fairly easily. It's about the same thickness all around. Okay. And then I'm gonna take my cutting tool. And as you can see, I made this slightly oval shaped. And I'm just gonna cut an even line across, as even as I can. And pull the excess away. Okay. And then I'm gonna do my other two sides. I'm going to cut a side here. And um, on this side over here. So now I almost have a rectangle. As you can see, I left a little off the top here. And I'm just gonna put the extra away for another project. Press the sides here, make it even, put it down, okay. Now at the top here, I'm gonna try to make a little bump at the top, okay. And 
use both my index fingers to make a little, little bump. And I'm going to take my, my the edge of my tool, not the cutting edge, but the other side. Press it down here. Press it down here a little bit. And maybe cut off a little here. So now, at least except for the part, that little bump, we have a rectangle. And again, you can use your tool to shape it. You can use your fingers. Okay. So now in the end, we have one cover. We don't have to decide if it's the front cover or the back cover, but we do have a cover. Okay. And we have this little bump at the top. And pat down the sides. Okay. And now we're going to do the same thing with the other piece. Okay, so um, keep working on your first cover. And I'm going to make the second piece. I'm going to, again, squish it about 20 times in a few minutes and do the exact same thing as I did with the other one. And I'll see you in a few minutes when you are finished. Okay, so now we have both of our covers. We have a blue one and a, I don't know if it's green, I call it 1960s green. If you've ever seen pop art from the 1960s, you know what I'm talking about. Okay, so we have our two covers. Now, the reason I made those bumps at the top is that is the part that the book will hang from, but we have to poke holes, a hole in each one. Okay, so I'm gonna put these back down. I don't think the part with the hole needs to be that big. So I'm gonna take my cutting tool, trim it a little on the side and at the, the side here and there. This side there. there a little. And again, any leftover clay you have, you can use for another project. Just keep it in a plastic bag, otherwise it will dry out. See, I've got about this much of each piece left over. And again, I could make the book slightly bigger and use all of it, but um, it's really up to you. This is about, let's see, let's measure them. This is about, they're about two inches long and a little less than an inch and a half um, wide. Okay, so now I'm just evening it, evening it out here. I'm also going to cut off some at the top. It does not need to be that long. He's there. And a piece there. Um, you get a little curve it around. You can leave it square. You can curve it. Okay. And at that point, um, you could take a. I have a tool like this here, all right, with a large ball on the end and a small ball at the end. Um, 
And basically you could take something that it could be um, like a skewer, something that would poke a fairly small hole. Okay, a pencil or a straw would be too wide. Um, a mini straw might be, you know, would be okay here actually. That works. But a regular size straw, no. Anyway, I'm going to take my mini tool and I'm going to carefully put a hole in the middle of each of those bumps in the same spot. And I'm going to try to find somewhere halfway in between each side and then up a little halfway in between and stick that hole in all the way. Okay. And um, carefully pull it up. Um, at this point I will also lift it, make sure the hole goes all the way in. Basically you want it to be large enough for some cord to go through or a large ring. Okay, so as you can see here, now you can see through the hole, it goes all the way through. And when you bake it, it's not going to expand or contract. It's, it's going to be about this size. So, okay, now I'm going to carefully do that in the same spot with the other one. I'm going to go about halfway in between, then halfway up and down. Okay, lift it up. Make sure this goes all the way through. Carefully pull it out. Just pat down the edges a bit. You know, you, you know, anything flat that you have, you can always press into the clay to even it out some. Pressing it, you know, on the table is also helpful. Again, you always want to have that flat surface, but having something to push the clay against helps. Once you bake it, you can't do that. It's going to be hard, but at this stage you can. Okay, so now we have two sides with two holes. Just make sure this hole is a little bigger. And what you can do is, let's say you start to poke a hole and it tears or it's too big. You can always, remember this is still soft, you can always press it down again and shape it. Um, or even if um, the lump falls off, you can take a piece and attach it to the top. Okay, and then poke the hole through that. All right, so there are, you know, when the clay is not baked, you can make mistakes and correct them. Okay, so now we have two covers and we're gonna put a design on each one. Okay, now I have actually a real seashell here and I have a glass seashell here. And let's see which one works better to make a design. I really don't know, we're gonna find out, okay? So I'm gonna take my real seashell and I am going to put it sideways. Or I could put it this way, either way it works. I'm gonna place it down and press it into cover number one. Okay, press, you want to press it down enough so it makes an impression, but not too much because you don't want a big hole. Okay, now let's see, let's carefully lift up our shell. Oh, we have a very nice shell impression here. That's great. I'll hold this up, look more closely. That worked. 
Now let's take our big shell, a big, the glass shell, and let's try it on the other cover. And what this side is smooth. This one has ridges on it. Let's try that. Press it down again. You want to go about halfway through the clay, not more. Press it down as evenly as you can. And let's lift it up. And this also made a decent impression. Though I have to say, I like the one from the real shell better. But, you know, if you don't have a tool to make a design in it, you know, there's all kinds of things you can press into the clay to make a design. Okay. So, in the meantime, though, I have this. I'm going to take this end, and on this cover, on each corner, I'm going to press a little hole. One here. Here. And there. Okay. And on this side, I'm going to do something a little different. I'm going to make, I'm going to make a small hole in each corner. Just a little one. Maybe I'm going to take a sharp end here, and you could take anything that's sharp. It can be um, a pencil, just or a needle, and make some waves right here. Make some waves in the clay. Side. This corner and some more waves and some more waves and some more waves and some more waves. Okay. And um, yeah, on this side, I'm going to draw a line between the holes. And you could even put your initial on the cover. OK, so really anything any way you want but yes i am now a big fan of using a shell to put a design on the cover okay so at this stage we have finished our covers but of course there is one thing we have to do with them that's very important and that is to bake them okay um you are going to bake the cover. You're going to put, put them on tin foil. Okay. They can be the same piece, not on top of each other, next to each other. You're going to get your oven and um, put the oven on at 260 degrees. And you want to bake them, I would say, at least 15 minutes at 260. You will probably need longer. 15 minutes is enough for something small made out of clay, like this, or a bead, like let's say you make beads out of them. Um, but these pieces are bigger, and they will need a little bit long, more time. So I would check them after 15 minutes. And if they need another 10 to 15 minutes 
let them go. But by 25 to 30 minutes for sure at that temperature, they will be hard, okay? And while the, bee, the covers are baking, we're gonna move on to the next big step of this activity, which is making the pages that go inside. Okay, so you're gonna take your paper now and fold it very carefully. Now it's really important that you take your time folding so that whatever you're folding is as even as possible. Okay, so fold your paper in half. And um, then you're going to fold it sideways. Like, okay, now we're in half. We're gonna fold it this way. Again, as even as possible. If it is not perfectly even, that's what the scissors are for. So don't worry about it, but try to be as even as you can. Okay, then take, make it wide again and then fold it over. And then make it wide again. Fold that side over. And then you're going to fold it again. Actually, at this stage, you know what? This is probably folded enough. Okay, you could fold it over one more time, but I'm gonna stop here. And then you wanna look at the side of the sheet that is closed. So like if I open this, I can see there's pieces opening up here, but this entire side is folded. So you're going to take your paper and cut about you're going to cut about an inch off like so. And then you're gonna take a piece. Let's say about half an inch. And this time you're not gonna to touch the closed side. This time you're gonna trim it off the open side. So here's your open side, about half an inch. And now you are going to go to the bottom. Now the bottom of the paper, you've got some pieces that are folded and some that are not. And you're just gonna trim off a tiny piece, tiny little bit, just enough to make, make them all open. Okay, okay. And then we are going to cut off just a little more. And in the end, keep trimming your paper until it is just, until all those folded pieces of paper are just a little bit smaller than your cover. But remember, you're gonna leave one side folded, okay? Don't open all the sides, okay? So in the end, I basically, it actually looks like a little book. And I'm just leaving the pages through, okay? All right. 
Then you are going to open it up. And at this point, you might have to trim the pages a little more, okay? Sometimes when you're cutting a whole lot of pages at a time, they don't come out so evenly. So give yourself a chance, give yourself enough space. Pretend you're cutting hair. You're not cutting off big chunks at a time now. You're cutting off little, little bits. On each side, make it as even as you can. Okay. So now I've opened up the pages and I'm going to take my stapler and put the stapler all the way at the end. Here, let's look at it down on the bottom. So I'm going to put my book and I'm going to put the head of the stapler where the staple actually is as close to the middle as I can. Basically, that met the, the silver part of the stapler here is going to be right where the book creases. And I'm going to put it in the middle, right there, as close to the middle as I can. So the silver edge of the staple, stapler here is right where these pages crease. And I'm putting it about halfway through the book. And I'm going to press really hard. And now they are secure in one piece okay and i'm just gonna press it a little bit so it doesn't open too easily and so now i have the pages of the book okay and you can't really do anything with this until your um covers are finished baking and and until they have cooled off okay um, if you want to write inside it, you can at this stage. You can do it after your book is finished, but you could do it right now as well. Okay. If you want to put the title of your book, you want to put your name in there, you want to put your best friend's names in there, um, this would be a time you could do that. Um, so, all right. So, you're going to finish this up. I'm going to stop the video. And um, once your cover is finished baking, again, could be 15 minutes, 25 minutes, at 250 degrees in an oven, not a microwave, um, we'll continue. Okay, welcome back. Um, by now you have baked your covers and you have let them cool and in my case, I and I put my pages together. I also took a paper plate and put some glue on it because we are going to need that next. Now, you might be wondering why these look exactly the same. Like they haven't been baked. That's because they haven't been baked because I don't have an oven here. But what I did before is I took home covers I made yesterday and I baked them there. So for the purposes of finishing this project, we're going to take the covers I made, made and baked yesterday. So they look a little different. I used another tool to make a design. I didn't have the shells. They're a different color and they're a little smaller. So you can see I used Instead of using two pieces with two colors, I use one piece with one color. Okay, so here, not only are these baked and cooled, but I took some clear nail polish and I put a couple of coats of varnish on them to make them shiny. Okay, you can do, you don't have to do that. And you do that after it's baked, not before. You could use that as well. Um, so I'm going to take the pre-made covers and that's what we're going to use to finish the book. The other thing I did was I decided that I wanted to make my book a little bit thicker, okay, with more pages. So before we made this one, then I took another piece of paper and folded it and trimmed it to be the same size. And what I can do now is I can put 
that paper, I can either glue it or staple it inside the other ones. And now I have more pages inside the book. Okay, so you just take, you're basically making two of them, then attaching one inside the other. Okay, and here I have a pre-made one here. This one's a little bit bigger. I made it to, I mean, a little smaller because I needed to make it to fit these covers. Okay, so you're gonna take your finished and cooled and dried and varnished covers and lay them down with the design down. The designs are on your outside, okay? You don't want that, you, you're not gonna be gluing it on the outside. You're gonna be gluing the pages inside. Okay, so you're gonna lay them down right like this, okay? And the other thing is, is that um, you're not gluing every single page in the book, obviously. When you have it stapled together like that, all you need to attach is one page on one side and the other page on the other, okay? You can attach a side to one cover and, and an aside to another one. And this is what you need your glue for. So take your finger or something to apply it with, um, brush some glue onto your paper. And you're going to apply one side carefully to the cover. Okay. And you're going to let that dry. Yeah, let one side dry before you apply the other side. So, do that one first, and I'll see you after it dries. And we're going to do our. Welcome back. We're at the last part of our craft activity today. And here we are, and as you can see, um, I glued each side to each cover, and then I put the stapler on top of it, which so it would be weighed down a little bit as it and dry evenly. Okay, so I've been, the stapler's been sitting on top of the glued book for about 10 minutes. I'm gonna take it off. Okay, so now we have our book. Okay, a um, couple more things we need to do with it. Um, and again, make sure that each page is glued on before you do the next step and that that glue is dry. Okay, so we glued this page onto this side and the other one onto the other side. Okay, so now I've got it here in my hand. And um, last thing I'm gonna do is take my cord and you know, you're gonna want, you remember those holes are there. You're gonna wanna tie the book together with something. Yes, the glue is holding it together, but it's only holding it together with paper. So it could actually fall apart easily. You do wanna have this tied in some way. So whether you take a large ring that you put through it or a cord, um, you need to do something to keep these two sides together. And actually, let me cut off the cord a little narrower, make it easier to go through. And I'm going to put the cord through the two sides. This is why it's important that they're even. Take some jiggling to go through. Okay. 
Sometimes you might have to put one side all the way through. And actually I'm going to use the scissor, not to cut it, but to pull it a little bit. Okay, so now I've pulled one side through. And um, I'm gonna put it through the other side. Here we go. Okay, now I've pulled it through both ends and I can loop it and tie it with a bead. I know the one that I made that I bought a few years ago. I stuck a bead, they stuck a bead up on top and then they tied it and then they added a latch to close it. however you want to tie it. But in any case, make sure it is tied together in some way, whether you are going to make it into a necklace or into a keychain, that's what you're going to do. And no matter what you make it into, you will be able to open and close the book. You will be able to write things in it or make a little picture. And, um, and if you have more clay, you can keep making some more, make some for your friends. Okay, so here we go. This is, here is our miniature book. All right, so on May 29th, we're going to have another activity and um, we are also going to have two special guests and the activity is about birds. I'm going to be reading about birds and we're going to be making a bird craft. So I decided to invite two birds to come with me while we're doing the read aloud and while we're doing our craft, I invited my two parrots. So we're going to have two parrot guests and um, they are two different kinds of parrots and um, they are very funny. And yes, they bite sometimes, but they don't bite the screen, so you'll be fine. And um, so join us on May 29th for our bird reading and craft and you will meet my two parrots. And if you, and there is a kit that goes with this activity. So if you register, then you can pick up the kits starting on Monday um, for the May 29th activity. And again, don't forget our summer reading program starts June 28th and the website is riverdalelibrary.readsquared.com. See you next time.